Now we're going to look at how triangles are different for flat surfaces in spherical geometry. So one of the ways to look at that is to examine how many degrees are there in a triangle. When I taught sixth grade math, one of the investigations we did was what are the total number of degrees in a triangle? So I would have my students make any triangle they wanted. So I made three triangles here. This is a right triangle. That's acute, and that one's obtuse. You could even say that's isosceles. Most of these are scaling. And what we did is we tore the triangles into pieces. All right, doesn't really matter how. And we tore the angles off, and we tried to put them together. So you can see here, when I put this triangle together, it comes very close to 180 degrees, trying to very quickly here. All right, there we go. And let's say I take this one. Here's one piece. Then I tear the other two angles off, and I put those angles together. And for this right triangle, you can see that the angles add up to 180 degrees. Even this obtuse triangle will follow the same behavior. I'll tear off all the angles. There's angle 2. Now I'll put it with angle 1 and angle 3. It's important to mark your angles, otherwise you can get lost and forget what is the angle in the triangle. And look at that, they all make a straight line. And in fact, I still have my sixth grade journal. And here's what we have. Here's the original triangle I made. And here's the, when I put all three angles together. And what we discovered in our investigation is that the sum of angles in a triangle is always 180 degrees. And remember, we were exploring flat triangles. Now we have a riddle. A woman walks due south for one mile. She then turns 90 degrees and walks due east for one mile. She sees a bear and decides to head due north for one mile, away from the bear, and ends up where she started. What color is the bear? Okay, I have this virtual sphere. You don't see the whole thing right now. And we're on the surface of it. And I have an east-west line. It might be a little tilted and I have a line going to the North Pole. And here's another line going to the North Pole. So our lady starts somewhere up here and she walks due south for one mile, then turns 90 degrees, goes east, and walks due north one mile. And she ends up where she started. So let me back out so you can see my whole sphere now. And for me to make it to scale, that definitely is too long to be a mile. If I want her to end up back where she started, I've got to shorten that leg there. So you can see that she pretty much ends up at the North Pole. Now the interesting thing about this is I've got, do I have a triangle here? I've got 90 degrees there, 90 degrees there, and something more than zero. So that would imply that triangles have more, more than 180 degrees on a spherical surface. But you could point out, wait a second, Mrs. Overman, uh, that latitude there is not a great circle. It's not a straight line. So my line segment might actually be a little bit off of that. So there's some turn there. And you would be right. But we're going to go ahead and talk about how many degrees are in triangles made from straight lines on spherical surfaces. And I'll just make one here really quickly. And so if I do this, let me zoom out just a touch. It is possible to make these triangles that have 90 degree angles on the two corners. And this is with straight lines, by the way. This is not with latitudes. Um, and then still have some other angle up here. In fact, I can just keep moving that out. And as long as I put this at my North Pole somewhere, there we go. That should be about right. That's close to 90. Right? And that 
that's definitely close to 90. And I would even argue that that's close to 90. So let's go ahead and take a look at a globe and cut apart some of these angles and see how they behave. So how is that bear riddle relevant to triangles and spherical geometry? So remember, triangles are going to look a little different because they're over a curved surface. I went ahead and sacrificed one of my globes and I cut a triangle out so that we could take a better look at it. So here's the triangle. I'll zoom in just a touch. And I went ahead and looked at the southern hemisphere. And you can see there's 90 degrees there. There's 90 degrees there. You can tell because it's a square. And I also have, as poorly cut out as it is, a 90 degree angle here. So what are the total number of degrees in this triangle? Well, you could argue that the total number of degrees is 90 plus 90 plus 90, which is 270. And in fact, what I did is I did the same exercise that we did before with sixth grade, and I took this part of the globe and I cut off the corners. So I could put them together like we did so long ago, and let's see. So I'm putting the corner pieces together, and again, globes. This globe is not that easy to work with. And you can see that when I add up the angles, it's not a straight line anymore. I'm getting 270 degrees. So for this particular case, where I went 90 degrees along one side, and I used the great circle of the equator and two longitudes, I got 270 degrees in a triangle for spherical geometry. I also looked at triangles using my nice little spherical geometry simulator here. And you can see right here, this angle looks pretty close to 90 degrees. And if I rotate my globe, that angle looks pretty close to 90 degrees. So I have two 90 degree angles in this triangle, and I did that on purpose. I know that this uh, great circle is perpendicular to that great circle. And you can see this angle is more than 90 degrees. I could make it equal 90 degrees like that, or I can keep going here. Let me kind of rotate it so you can see a little better. I can even make this obtuse with two 90 degree angles in it. So for triangles on the surface of spheres, they can get quite large. So it's not just going to be 270 degrees. It could be anything over 180 degrees. So the angles in spherical triangles sum to more than 180 degrees. And using more advanced mathematics, the upper limit for spherical triangles is 540 degrees, which actually, if you think about it, 180 times 3, because I can't exceed 180, I could do that, and so that approaches 540 degrees. Thinking further, um, why do you think geometry is an appropriate name for this field of mathematics? Geo comes from the word earth, and metria comes from the word measure, and that should be M-E-T-R-I-A. And in what other ways do you think polygons might be different in Euclidean and spherical geometries? I will not give you the answers here. This is something for you to ponder.